This is video 11 on the grade 11 topic on Newton's laws and this is the second part of Newton's laws on gravitation. We're talking about the gravitational field strength in this video. It's not a force, it's the strength of the gravitational field around a planet. So what I've drawn here is our planet P and around it I've drawn gravitational field lines and you can see they have direction and they certainly get further apart as we get further away from the planet. So these are gravitational field lines and they represent the gravitational field around the Earth. So if we place a mass in that gravitational field, another mass in that gravitational field, then it's going to experience a gravitational force of attraction. So this planet sets up a gravitational field and when another mass comes into that field then it experiences a gravitational force. Gravitational fields, field lines have direction so they are vector quantities. So the question is in this video what is the strength of the gravitational field as we get closer to the planet or as we move further away? Does it get stronger or weaker? What does the gravitational field strength, G, depend on? So firstly we need to define a gravitational field strength. So gravitational field strength is given the symbol little g and you'll recognize that We've been using a value of little g on Earth, on the surface of the Earth, of 9.8 meters per second squared. And that we've been calling a gravitational acceleration. But we need to go back to how gravitational field strength was defined to be able to get back to that answer. So on page 7 of our notes, we're going to find a definition for gravitational field strength. And here it is on page 7. Gravitational field strength, little g, is defined as the force acting per unit mass. Now, simple definition to learn for the exam. The force acting per unit mass. So if we go back to our discussion here, Gravitational field strength is the force per unit mass. It is a vector quantity because gravitational fields have direction. The direction of a gravitational field is towards the planet, always. And force F is a force, it's a gravitational force it's the gravitational force that that mass m experienced when it was brought into this gravitational field so the unit of force is the mass uh, the newton and a mass would be the mass of the this object that's placed in the gravitational field so there is a gravitational field here and we are putting a mass into that gravitational field it might be a satellite it might be a comet that's coming past this planet. It is a mass in that planet's gravitational field. So the strength of the gravitational field, little g, has units of the Newton for force per kilogram. Well, if we bring kilograms to the top, we get Newtons per kilogram as the unit for gravitational field strength. So this is a new unit to, for us. We've been used to meters per second squared so far and we'll come back and show that those two units are identical. So let's look at a value we do know. On Earth the gravitational field strength at the surface of the planet is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. If we went to Mars, we would find that the gravitational field strength on the surface of Mars is a lot less. 
7, uh, 3.72 newtons per kilogram on the surface of Mars. And if we went to the Sun, if that was possible, we would find that the gravitational field strength on the surface of the Sun would be just over 28 newtons per kilogram. So if we had a 1 kg mass on the surface of the Earth, it would experience a force of 9.8 newtons. If you took that same kilogram of mass to Mars, on the surface of Mars, it would have it would experience a gravitational force of just 3.72 newtons on the surface of Mars. If you took that same kilogram of mass to the Sun, it would experience over 28 newtons of force as the gravitational force acting on it. So the gravitational field strength is defined as the force per unit mass. Um, that's the gravitational force that the mass would experience in that field, and that is the mass that we place in the field. So with that definition in mind, let's go to showing that the Newton per kilogram is identical to the meter per second squared. We know that the Newton, which was mass times acceleration, has the units of kilograms for mass and meters per second squared for acceleration. So the, the Newton is equivalent to the kilogram meter per second squared. And if we replace the Newton with that unit, we get kilogram meter per second squared times the inverse of kilograms. And we can see that these two then cancel and we're left with meters per second squared. So the Newton per kilogram is an equivalent unit to the meter per second squared. All right, so what does G depend on? What does the gravitational field strength of a planet depend on? So here's a, a point a mass m that's placed on the surface of this planet. This planet has a mass capital M. So here's a, I don't know, a car on the surface of a planet of mass m. And we know that the gravitational force acting on that car f is found using Newton's law of universal gravitation. The gravitational force depends on the mass of that car, the mass of the planet, and the distance between the centers of these two objects, these two masses, which is just the radius of the planet. But we defined the gravitational field strength as the force per unit mass. Here's the force acting on that car. There's the mass of the car. And we can see that the two masses cancel and that leaves us with an expression for the gravitational field strength on the surface of any planet. What does the gravitational field strength depend on? It depends on the mass of the planet only and the radius of the planet only. Nothing else. It doesn't depend on the mass that was sitting on the surface of the planet. It doesn't depend on little m. So the capital M is the mass of the planet. And R here, because this point is on the surface of the planet, then it is one radius away. So when you're working out the gravitational field strength on the surface of a planet, then you must use the radius of the planet. So R in this case, to be more general, is the distance from 
center of planet. So that makes it more general because this point here, which is at the surface, could be way out there in space. And we could use the same expression, the same equation, to find the gravitational field strength at that point. All we'd need to know is the mass of this planet and the distance between the center of the planet and that point in space. And if R increases, if we get further and further away from the planet, then the gravitational field strength there should be less. It's also an inverse square law. So if we double the distance from the center of the planet, then we'd have a gravitational field strength that is a quarter of what it is at the surface. So let's look at example one. What have we got here? We've got the Earth, and we've got a point on the surface of the Earth not a mass it's just a point and that point we've chosen to be on the surface of the earth and then we've taken that point and we said okay let's take it a distance of 2,000 kilometers above the surface of the earth and uh, find the gravitational field strength there and then we can compare these two values well in order to do that you're going to need the mass of the earth and the radius of the earth those are the two things that you need to find gravitational field strength on the surface so in the first question we I want you to find the gravitational field strength at the surface of the earth and in the second part the gravitational field strength at a point 2,000 kilometers above the surface of the earth and then pause the video have a go at that find G on the surface of the earth and find little g on at a point 2,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. Pause the vid video, attempt the question, and come back for the answer. Okay, so on the surface of the Earth, we were expecting to get 9.8, because it is the Earth, and it is a point on the surface of the Earth. So we only, only one radius. The distance between the two is one radius, the radius of the Earth. So there's capital G. There's the mass of the Earth, and there's the distance between the centers of these two masses, one radius. And don't forget to convert it to meters, and also don't forget to square it. And that gives you a value that we are used to, 9.81. We could write there newtons per kilogram as the unit for the gravitational field strength or we could have written meters per second squared as the unit for gravitational field strength. But it is a vector, so it needs direction. So this is towards the Earth. G is a vector quantity. It has direction. And then the second part you should have got a much smaller answer, a much smaller answer for G because it's further away from the planet. The gravitational field gets weaker as you get further away from the center of the planet. And you should have got an answer of 5.70. So the only thing that changed was the distance between the centers of the two points. Um, we had to add 6,400 kilometers to, this is not to scale, but that's 2,000 kilometers. So the distance between the point in question in space and the center of the planet is 8,400 kilometers. And we convert that to meters, multiply by 1,000, square this distance and we get an answer that is definitely smaller 
than the gravitational field strength on the surface. So G gets weaker as we get further away from a planet. In example 2, we're looking at planet X and we're picking a point on its surface and we're saying what is the gravitational field strength there. And then we're going to another planet and this planet has a mass four times planet X's mass and its radius is half of planet X's radius. So the question is what is the new gravitational field strength there? By what factor has it changed at the surface of these two planets? So try this question out. By what factor, we've done something similar before, by what factor does the gravitational field strength change on the surface of planet Y? So pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so as always, if we're trying to compare two gravitational field strengths, we would write down an expression for the gravitational field strength on the surface of planet X. It's the universal gravitational constant multiplied by the mass of planet X divided by the distance between the distance that that point is from the center of the planet, which happens to be the radius of the planet and we've got to square that. So that's an expression for the gravitational field strength on the surface of planet X. But when we go to planet Y, we should have a new gravitational field strength. What does it depend on? G, capital G, the universal gravitational constant, multiplied by the mass of planet Y. Well, if we write it in terms of the mass of planet X, it's 4m, 4 times as massive, and then we divide by the distance between that point, the distance that that point is from the center of the planet, which in this case is a half of r, and then we need to square that new distance. And we've got a bit of work here to do. We've got to pull out a factor in the numerator, we can pull out 4 and leave G and M together. And in the denominator, a half squared is a quarter. And R squared is R squared. Well, there's our factor there. And a quarter goes into 4 16 times. So we've got 16 and this expression here was the original gravitational field strength. So we've simplified it down to 16g. So the new gravitational field strength on this planet, Y, is 16 times larger than the gravitational field strength on planet X.